one went into the end zone. No challenge by the Ticats. They've got to start at the one. Take the Walker. And twos. That little dump off pass. And he has four. But should they have challenged? Let's take a look at a replay of the punt. And you're going to see the ball land inbounds at around the one or two yard line. And then it bounces. The question is, does that bounce sideways fast enough to get out of bounds? And you see it hits between, probably between the one and two yard line. I think left of the pylon should be in the end zone for a single, or which the Ticats would have gladly given up. Second and six. And there's a big first down to get him out of trouble from Siobhan Walker. Well, Walker just makes a great lateral cut in the hole without losing any speed. Keep an eye on number 29. He's going to come from behind the quarterback, Burris, straight ahead, and then swoops laterally. And that's where he loses the linebacker. Kenny Ingram on the play. Ingram was stepping up to him. Walker just dodged laterally, got behind his blocks, turned it upfield for the first down. Once rated one of the top five high school running backs in the United States. This time Walker not going anywhere. Aaron Hunt fills the hole and drops Walker for a loss. Aaron Hunt, great addition to this Montreal team. Mark Tressman talked yesterday about they've had a lot of turnover when you're a team trying to maintain a certain tradition, a certain culture within the room. It helps when you've got some veteran guys who, at least from being around the league, understand what the Alouettes are all about. Second and 11. Walker releases, takes the dump off, and Shea Emery on the scene. And he'll take him down. And we get confirmation from Tom Higgins that that is not a challengeable play of the punt. So our appreciation to the director of officiating. Keep an eye here on Shea Emery. Coming off a week in which he was the league's Canadian player of the week for his efforts against Calgary. Despite the score, Emery turned in a pretty strong game here as well. Martel moves one to the 48. And that is cut down. Good tackle there by Bo Smith. Back to work goes AC and the Owls when we come back. It's been a game changer. A couple of touchdowns in this game. That blazing speed has been on display. And Steve Gillen is our other Scotiabank game changer. Nominated for his work with the Hamilton Health Sciences a family of hospitals whose mission is to raise funds and foster awareness to help support outstanding clinical care research. He has thrown a number of fundraisers since 2009. Founder of High Fives Help Lives, and we salute Steve Gillen, a special bank game changer. It's a big play for Jamel Richardson, a guy the Alouettes need to be a game changer here. Yeah, plays like that will sure help. Chewing up a big chunk of yardage there as Richardson gets open down the seam. Perfect timing throw, as usual, from Anthony Calvillo on this one. Richardson, the lead receiver, motioning to the right on this one. He's going to head straight down that right hash. Three-step drop, timing. The ball is out in his hands. 24-yard gain. Third catch, 54 yards for Richardson. Calvillo Puck gonna go. He wants Brandon Redman. Got him. Touchdown. On the money, and Brandon London gets the Alouettes a little closer. Well, a great throw and catch there. Anthony Calvillo set it up again. He took that same three step drop. Pump fake to get the defenders to hold. Let Brandon London make his break and put it up. Keep an eye on the footwork, the right arm of Calvillo. There's the pump, frees the defenders, and then put it up. Great catch in traffic by London. Sometimes a forgotten man in this receiving core. Developing quickly, replacing the now retired Kerry Watkins. 
First touchdown catch of the year coming off his first ever 100-yard game last week. It's a 32-yard touchdown grab as he takes a seat. Be where he looked first on that play. Looked like the first guy might have been Jamel Richardson on the inside who he hit on the previous play on that pump fake. He's got the halfback, Bo Smith, on the inside on Richardson. Freezes him on the inside for just long enough to give London a little more time to get open on the outside, prevent the help from getting there. What an interesting series up coming. Siobhan Walker takes off. And he'll get tripped up about the 35-yard line. Brought down by Wapamo Osaisai. So two touchdown passes for Anthony Calvillo. Henry Burris has hit three so far in this game. Burris continues what has been his best outing as a Hamilton Tiger Cat, 18 of 21 at this point. Now being challenged to respond, as you know, the Alouettes aren't going to lie down here in the second half of this ball game. Of course, to send the message that the Tiger Cats won't let a lead slip away twice as they did last week against Toronto. Nine and eight in his career against Montreal, and not many. Quarterbacks could say they've got a better 500 record against the Alouettes. Short gain here sets up a passing situation on second and long. It was almost 13 years ago, Henry Burris made the first start of his CFL career, fittingly against the Montreal Alouettes at Nelson Stadium. And he won that one. See what he's got on second and eight. on the Owls offside. A crosser and Noah Jones has a first down. Over the field and dropped at the Montreal 48. And unless there was early movement on that Hamilton offensive line, it's a 28-yard Ticat pickup. Ticats go to the crossing routes here with Andrea Jones. He's going to come from the very bottom of the screen. Montreal number seven. That penalty is declined. First down. There you see the offside John Bowman on the play, given a freebie. But all those crossing routes, great pick by Andy Fantuz on the halfback, Gerald Brown, is what frees up on Rhea Jones. Two guys who were in the Chicago Bears training camp together last year, those two receivers. 28-yard pickup by Jones. First down, back into the hands of Walker, and he's brought down again, a short tackle by Emery, or else Walker sprints away. And you've seen a more aggressive defensive posture or approach from Shea Emery, the Alouette's middle linebacker this season. It seems fitting in a Jeff Reinbold defense, living on the edge, that Emery is constantly coming downhill, meeting running backs in the hole at the line of scrimmage, but attacking, always moving forward as he's making plays. Said there were a few doubts after the concussion problems last year, but those would appear to be long erased. He's as physical as he's ever been. Here comes Heat from Hebert, and he catches Burris, who throws it away. Gonna, oh, is this going to be grounding or roughing the quarterback? Burris saying there was somebody in the neighborhood, but he was clearly trying to avoid the sack. Come on, man. Come on. So the officials conference and a little lobbying on either side about what this call will be. Attention Browning, Hamilton number one. It'll be third down. Well, the man who provided the pressure is going to be the free safety coming off the backside. That's number 34, Kyrie Zaber. He's the furthest man away, but in a five-on-five -five protection scheme, shouldn't be left unblocked. If they had brought another man front side, you could see him being left free, but he was the only blitzer on the play with the 4D lineman. Martell looks for the corner. Trent Guy on the sidelines, and he'll get bumped out there. And the Alouettes go back to work. Now down by 15. For each home game, they are honoring one of the greats Bulls of the past tonight, Paul Osbaldiston. On the ticket, winning kick in the Eastern Final of 1998. 
against the Montreal Alouettes, sending the Tie Cats to the Great Cup game. He and his family honored here, already on the Wall of Honor, twice a Great Cup winner. Now helping out the black and gold as part of their coaching staff, helping out with their special teams. Here's Calville looking for London again and overshoots the target by a couple of strides. Well, there is Oz to win in 98. Sending them to the Great Cup game on that day. And brought Dave Ritchie to his knees in <laughs> disappointment. Oh. The tickets, of course, featuring that kick by Osbaldiston. Gonna miss this place. Great sight lines here. And only six games left in the old 84 year facility. Going deep for London again. He's got it. Won that battle against Matt Buckner, and they're going to go back and work on the youngster on the corner. The Hamilton native, Buckner, gets torched for a 37-yarder. They sure did. Brandon London, number 14, is just going to run that fade route down the far right sideline. Offensive line did a nice job picking up the twist from the Ticat D. Good adjustment to the ball from London. Matt Buckner never got turned around on that one. So well, that's three consecutive long passes to London. One into the end zone, one incomplete. Now 37-yarder to midfield. Here comes pressure. Going deep again, and this one is incomplete. Intended for Eric Delorier. It looked like he had a step. Well, Delorier was open, and the ball couldn't have been more perfectly thrown. Number nine, he's the number two receiver out to the field. Good release to get in behind Markeith Knowlton. Calvillo drops it in there perfectly, but Delorier just didn't make the squeeze. The bobble, and Knowlton, after the bobble, knocked it away. And you heard the boys in pregame talking about the number of dropped balls this year, missed opportunities. Would have been his biggest play of the year. Instead, it's a long out, and second and ten. Inside, S.J. Green keeps his balance and keeps the chains moving. Bumped up by Carlos Thomas, but it's a 20-yard pickup. The Owls' momentum is building. Ticats gave them an opportunity, and they're letting them back in this ballgame. It's a familiar refrain. First four weeks of the year, no lead he is safe. S.J. Green, another 100-plus yard team. Marcus Brady's boys are in a little bit of a groove here now. Airing it out. Three receivers in motion to the wide side. Calvillo looks that way. One of big catch. Popped down at the 25, where he is going to be close to the first down. Looks like it's enough on the spot. As Brandon London pads his stats. Now Brandon London's one of those guys who bided his time practicing but not getting a consistent opportunity to play. Jim Pop mentioned a couple of weeks ago to us that he thought Lamp London was the best receiver they had in training camp. And he said it takes two to three years for a receiver to really get the Montreal offense. And here's London now. That, into that time period of maturity in the offense. This sure year is a late season addition in 2010. First down, Galvillo with a shot, incomplete. Looking for his running back, Brandon Whitaker, on that one as they tried to get him featured in the route. Lining him up as a wide out. And while we have the opportunity, we want to extend our sympathy and our prayers to the Pop family. The general manager of the Alouettes lost his dad, Joe Pop, on Thursday. What a legend in high school college football in Carolina. Also an assistant coach with the Cleveland Browns. And again, our thoughts go out to Jim Pop and the family of Joe Pop. 
flag down on the play. This is how good a coach Joe Pop was. He took over a high school team that had not won a game in two years or a 32 game losing streak. Within two years, they had an unbeaten season. Offside, Hamilton number two. That penalty is declined. First up. And Joe Pop led Monroeville High School to the school's only ever state championship in North Carolina. You know, those of us around the Canadian Football League know that Jim Pop knows a thing or two about winning football. He comes by it, honestly. Yes, he does. The apple did not fall too far from the tree. Now it's threatening. First and ten. Straight to Whitaker. And LaVoie, touchdown! He has his third of the year. And it's fullback night in Hamilton. Well, the big fellas continue to shine. Patrick Lavoie, the hero with the winning touchdown last week against the Calgary Stampeders. That's a touchdown in three consecutive weeks for the rookie out of Laval. And number 81 looks right at home in the end zone. And this is a guy, he's a great fit in this offense. He, coming from University of Laval, where the fullback position is kind of a hybrid, almost like an H-back, fullback, slot back, tight end type role in that offense. So he caught a lot of passes as well as doing some blocking. Well suited to this Owls offense. Wipe the extra point and do not go away. Eight points the difference now as the Alouettes score back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to get back in it in Hamilton.